Hello, and welcome to another episode of Reading Reddit with Amber. Today I have another batch of outrageous stories for you from r slash am I the jerk. Also, shout out to the people who send in stories for today's video. Our first story is, am I the jerk for asking my girlfriend to pay for a new prosthesis? I'm a 24 year old male, and I had an auto accident over two years ago that resulted in a left leg knee amputation. I thought that would be the end of my active lifestyle. I loved all kinds of sports as a kid, and I still do. I had a very hard time adjusting to my new normal. My parents were able to get me a prosthetic leg that allowed me to get back to running and going on trips with my friends like we always do every summer. The guys were planning an RV trip on the weekend. We had already chosen a destination which was spending some time out in nature and a getaway from stress. My girlfriend asked if she could come along. I told her no, this is a guy's trip. Told her that all my buddy's girlfriends wanted to go, but they were firm and put their foot down. She laughed at me for this, then tried to convince me to let her come because she was feeling stressed out from being at home 24-7. I had already made up my mind. I wasn't going to ruin the trip just because she wants to be on a guy's trip. I promised her a trip when I get back. She got upset and didn't like the idea. Later on, before I went to sleep, I took my prosthesis off as I do every night. This is my second prosthesis. I've already completed a wearing schedule during the first year and had to get another prosthesis to accommodate any physical changes I had. I woke up in the morning and I couldn't find my prosthesis. I looked where I put it, but it was gone. I asked my girlfriend who was doing heavy cleaning around the place, and she said she didn't see it. I was confused because it had been near my bed. I asked her to stop being childish and playing games and give back my prosthesis because I knew she took it. She's a bad liar and couldn't even deny it. She said she wanted to hide it so that I won't go on that trip and leave her alone. I got mad at her for this. I was stunned to find my prosthesis hidden underneath an auto part in the garage. It had been damaged. It was placed in a position where it had a crack. It was obvious it no longer functions properly. I mean, I could still wear it, but I can't put my whole weight on it because it would break. I yelled at her and showed her what she did. She said she didn't mean it. I told her she did mean it because she was being childish and jealous over a trip, and now she caused me $7,000 worth of damage. I told her she ruined everything, that she owed me a new one, and that she needed to pay for a new one. She got mad and left. I basically had to use my old crutches. It felt absolutely horrible. I called the guys and told them I wasn't coming. It's been a few days. She's mad that I'm still asking her to pay for a new prosthesis and called me a jerk for not apologizing and preferring a plastic leg over her. I had to call my parents today to tell them. They told me she should at least help pay half the expense of a new prosthesis since she caused damage to it, and that I should consider my relationship with her. Have I been a jerk to her? Edit. For those asking about where I am, I'm in Asia, from the Philippines. Okay, the girlfriend is so much in the wrong here. Now, it is normal and healthy for people to do things with their friends without their partners. However, even if we want to be as generous as possible, give her absolute most benefit of the doubt, and assume that maybe there was a good reason why she didn't want him going on his own, which it doesn't sound like is the case, but even if we want to go there to like give her the most credibility, her actions were completely inexcusable. She has the right to express her displeasure to OP, and if she's really upset about the trip, she can decide if this is a relationship deal breaker. But you do not hide your partner's leg. This is not much different from tying an able-bodied partner to the bed so they can't go on the trip. She is using his leg to control where he can and can't go, and that is abusive behavior. I hope OP is able to get his prosthesis replaced and get out of this relationship, because it does not sound very healthy. Our next story is, Am I the jerk for taking my stepdaughter to a new OBGYN without telling her mother? I am married to my husband, who was a 17-year-old daughter from his first marriage. We have been married for four years. To get things out of the way, my husband and I started dating well after he divorced his wife. So we have her this month because her mother was diagnosed with the virus that is floating around while it was our week with our stepdaughter. TMI, she started her period last Thursday and it was bad. I am talking three days in bed, puking, worst cramps imaginable. I had similar symptoms when I was her age and I was diagnosed way too late with endometriosis. By day three, I asked her if this was normal for her, and she said that she always has very bad periods, but that her doctor told her it's normal because some women are just less pain resistant. I was alarmed and told her it was absolutely not like that, and her pain was not normal, and she needs to get a second opinion. 
She asked me if I trusted my doctor, and I told her yes, and she asked me if I could take her. I said of course and made her an appointment. We got an appointment for the next morning, and because my husband was away on business, I texted him to tell him what his stepdaughter wanted. Next morning we go, I wait in the car. She comes back and breaks. She starts crying, saying that she felt so relieved that her pain is not normal, and that while she gets screenings, she gets some pills to relieve her bleeding and pain, not contraception. When we came back, she seemed euphoric and was chatting with her mother. When she was done, her mom called me back and was furious with me. I am talking, screaming, calling me names, etc. She said it was not my place and that the only people that have a say in her health are her and my husband, that it was very creepy for me to talk about her privates when we were at home, and she said that she was going to go to her lawyer to only let us get visitation. I am stunned. My stepdaughter is old enough to make her own decisions regarding health. She is 17. She is not a baby. And I had no intentions but to help her because I went through the same thing in my teens. I was not talking to her about her genitals. I was talking to her about periods. And I think that is pretty normal. My husband says that he agrees with me. But he is my husband and clearly biased. I would like to know what I did wrong and if I am in the wrong to apologize to my stepdaughter's mom. OP is not the jerk here. As a step-parent, it is your responsibility to take your kid to the doctor if they are sick or in pain. It doesn't matter what part of their body is causing the issue, kids who are suffering need medical treatment. The stepmom literally just helped the girl set up an appointment and then chauffeured her there. Also, can we talk about how terrible the girl's first doctor was? If you see a child who is so sick from their period that they have to spend days on end in bed throwing up, and your response is, well, some people just can't handle period pain well, then you do not deserve to have a medical license. As a reminder, if your periods are making you sick like the girl in the story, that is not normal or healthy, and if your doctor says otherwise, get a second opinion. You shouldn't have to suffer because your doctor doesn't understand how periods work. Our next story is, am I the jerk for kicking my pregnant cousin out of my house? I'm a 27-year-old female. My granddad died when I was three and left an enormous sum of money to me as I was the only grandchild he got to know before his passing. My mother and her sister received a good amount of money as well, but my aunt never cared to save some of it for her future children or for the future in general. I decided to take care of my two brothers' education and I offered to do the same for my aunt's child too, my cousin and her brother. But my cousin Mora, 22-year-old female, didn't want to go and demand that I give her one million because that was what I owed her. I said that wasn't the deal and I didn't give her money. Mora got pregnant with her first child at 20. The father didn't want a baby and he just left. After that I gave her 30000 since I always felt it was unfair that her brother got something from our granddad and she didn't. So after this we kind of amended our relationship because she was really grateful. I think that was the first time we had a conversation without yelling or her cussing me out. I stepped in and tried to help her as much as I could with her baby and now she calls me auntie and loves to spend time with me. My aunt never approved of this since she always believed I stole from her children by not giving them half of my money, and she tried to fill Mora's head with bad things about me. When I got married at 25, I asked Mora to be my maid of honor, and my aunt tried to convince her that I wanted to humiliate her since her boyfriend left her when my nephew was born. I assured her that it wasn't like that, but my aunt ended up winning and my mother and I decided to cut ties with them after they almost screwed up my wedding. They called the venue and tried to cancel the wedding. Now with the pandemic and the lack of work, Mora called me asking for help since she had lost her job and can't take proper care of my nephew. She said that she was really sorry for what happened during my wedding and that she understood if I didn't want to help her, but that it wasn't for her but for the baby. I haven't seen him since I cut her off and I really missed him, so I agreed. I invited her to move in with me, my husband, and my five-month-old while she tried to get a job and get on her feet again. After this, we started to rebuild our relationship. She always helped around the house and sometimes babysat my daughter so I could take a long bath or things like that. She and my husband got really close during all of this. No, I didn't feel this was weird since my ex always said that holding grudges wasn't good for our daughter. He's a teacher that works with kids and used to tell me how things like that can damage a child. I guess finding that your dad has a kid with your mom's cousin does not. My aunt also started to be more civil toward me. I really thought that everything was starting to improve and that we were finally going to be a proper family. As I said before, they always treated me like a thief. A few weeks ago, she said that she had an announcement to make, made a delicious dinner, beautifully arranged the kitchen and invited all of us. 
my parents, my cousins, and our brothers, just to say that she was pregnant with my husband. I felt so betrayed and humiliated. My husband tried to defend himself, but I ended up kicking them both out. And while my family supports me, as in my parents and brothers, my aunt said that I have no right to kick them out since now she is my ex's girl and they have to live here. I told her that my ex doesn't own anything and that without me he doesn't have any money, that the house and all of our things are truly mine, and the only thing he is going to have is child support debt. Am I the jerk? They are living with my ex's parents since he was a stay-at-home dad and neither of them has a job. And then there are a bunch of edits. They're really long so I'm not going to read them here and I think you have the basic gist of the story from this. So if you want to see more, you can go to the original story, which I linked to in the description below, to see all the edits. I am going to say that OP is not the jerk. So much not the jerk. Like, I find it hard to fathom that there are people out there who are like, you've been nothing but nice to me while I've tried sabotaging you at every turn. Here, let me pay you back by sleeping with your husband and getting pregnant with him. The cousin is a jerk. The aunt is a jerk. OP's husband is a jerk. And OP will be better off with minimal contact from all these people from here on out. Our final story for today is, Am I the Jerk for Making Fun of a Woman for Being in Her 40s and Being Single? This whole saga started because my husband took my last name. A couple weeks ago, he got his workplace to change it, and his co-workers found out. About half of them think this is the funniest thing ever, and about half are deeply offended. Brenda is in the offended half and has made that clear. He and I are in a group chat with his coworkers where we organize carpooling during the pandemic. It is very helpful to us, so we can't leave the chat. Since he changed his name, my husband and I have been dealing with a lot of dumb jokes in the chat, which we have been mostly ignoring. Yesterday, Brenda, his coworker, and I got into a bit of a spat. I messaged the group asking if someone could take my husband home since I wouldn't be back from work until late and needed the car. One of his other coworkers agreed, and I thought that was that. Brenda messages the group saying, Maybe if you spent less time at work and more time being a wife, your husband wouldn't come into work with dirty shirts. I took this as a bad joke initially. My husband is a rural mail carrier, so his shirts look like shirts worn by someone in 90 degree heat on dusty roads. I do wash them, but there's only so much to be done. Me. I could make cleaning those shirts my full-time job and it wouldn't do much, lol. Brenda. You won't be married very long if you keep trying to be the man in the relationship. I'd be embarrassed as a wife if I did so little for my husband. Me. Well, I work more hours and pay the bills, so I think he can oxyclean his own shirts if it's so important. Brenda. Maybe you should learn to take proper care of your husband or you'll find yourself divorced. Me. I'll let you know when I need relationship advice from someone who is 42 and single. Now apparently, Brenda is going around and saying that I mocked her for being single in her 40s, I don't care if someone is single in their 40s, but I think it's absolute nonsense that she can call me a bad wife, but I can't point out that she has no frame of reference. Am I the jerk, Reddit? Edit. People keep asking why I need to help arrange rides in the first place. When my husband is out on deliveries, he rarely has self-service, so if I find out late that I'm going to be home late, I need to be able to reach his coworkers directly. Multiple spouses are in the chat for those same reasons. Edit 2. People are saying that I've hurt my husband's feelings by saying that I pay the bills. After reading the exchange, she sent me a text saying, Sometimes I forget you're a hard little jerk who takes no prisoners. I'm so proud, lol. He's fine. I asked him just now if my comment about the bills hurt him, and he said, Oh yeah, it's so hard having a hot wife who makes good money. Really tough. Pray for me. Sounds like Opie has found herself a good partner. Brenda's attempts to force her beliefs on Opie on a work chat was completely out of line. Different couples negotiate chores differently and the distribution of labor that works for one couple won't necessarily work for another. Housework isn't inherently a woman's responsibility, and, spoiler alert, men are actually grown adults and not giant babies who need to be taken care of. Sure, Opie's response wasn't the kindest, and it does miss the mark a little. Even if the co-worker had been married, telling Opie her marriage was going to be a failure because she refuses to spend her days agonizing over the state of her husband's clothes would have been inappropriate but I can't fault OP for getting annoyed that this woman with no insight into her relationship would chastise OP on a work chat for not living in a stereotypical marriage. Those are all the stories I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed them. If you did, consider giving the video a like or letting me know in the comments. I post new videos twice a week, funny or outrageous ones on Wednesdays and spooky ones on Sundays. Thanks for watching, 
and have a great day.